So we're going to look at common denominators for addition and subtraction. And if you think back to the examples of the first few toys that we played with, especially when I was drawing the pictures of the cakes, if we're playing with say fourths versus thirds, the way to make them like was to cut each like the other. So the fourths have to be cut in thirds and the thirds have to be cut in fourths. And so that leads to the twelfths. So maybe here I was just playing with one of each. So one fourth and one third. Got rewritten as three twelfths and four twelfths. And the twelve came from three times four. Just multiply the existing denominators. So earlier, remember, I, I was asking about when, when I was working with halves and sixths, what's the smallest denominator we could use? And at first, we didn't agree on that. Some of us said 12, some said 6. Um, it turns out there's a lot of different denominators we can use. Sometimes we like to use the smallest one. Do we have to? The answer is no. We totally don't have to. Um, so why do we bother? Uh, and again, when I cut each cake like the other, uh, I end up with an algorithm that looks like this. I'm gonna call this the arrow algorithm. And so I started with one fourth and I wanted to combine that with one third. And cutting each cake like the other meant the, the thirds had to be cut like fourths and the fourths had to be cut like thirds, which ended up with twelves, twelves. This one fourth right here got cut into thirds. And so that means I have to take the three times that one. This third up here had to be cut into fourths, right? So this four down here had to chop up that one into pieces. And so these are the relevant arrows. We do this crisscross and cross the denominator. And so the answer then is three plus four is seven, and those seven things are twelfths. And this one is what's known as the arrow algorithm, and it always works for any pair of fractions. And, and they have to be fractions. So a mixed number really isn't a fraction. It's a whole number and a fraction. And it also doesn't matter whether I'm doing addition or subtraction. So I didn't mention over here whether I was doing addition or subtraction, uh, but you can see there's three pieces there and four pieces there and altogether there's seven. If I wanted to do subtraction instead and say, hey, what about, um, I guess I need to reverse it, negative numbers, one third minus one fourth, how much bigger is a third than a fourth? That same algorithm works, three times four, is 12, four times one is four, three times one is three. We are subtracting four minus three is one twelfth. This over here is one twelfth bigger than that one over there. So the arrow algorithm works the same way for multiplication, uh, sorry, for addition and subtraction. We just have to remember, are we adding those numerators or are we subtracting? And it's the slickest, easiest way to add fractions. The alternative algorithm to this arrow algorithm is called the LCD algorithm. And LCD stands for lowest common denominator.
And we spent a lot of time in chapter four developing strategies to find the lowest common denominator. Uh, and, and so there's a little work that has to be done to do that. Uh, it turns out sometimes it's not much different than the arrow algorithm, but sometimes it is. So if I were going to apply that to the one, uh, see what was it, one third plus one fourth, the first step would be to find the lowest common multiple of three and four. And pretty straightforward, since they have no common factors, it's just three times four, which is 12 like before. Then the second, so that's like the first step. The second step is we say, okay, uh, how many times does the first denominator go into the second one? And we also want to know how many times does the second denominator go into the LCM? And then we have to then multiply accordingly. So we take our one third, it's right underneath, and we have to multiply top and bottom by four, and we have to take the one fourth, and according to this up here, we have to multiply top and bottom by three, and so that's going to give us four twelfths plus three twelfths, and now we can say, okay, the answer is seven twelfths. So uh, these two steps right here confound a lot of kids. And do we still want to teach this? Of course we do. It's, it's powerful. It's important. It has a lot of uh, useful applications, especially when kids get into algebra. Um, but, but I believe that this arrow algorithm is easier to use more often. Uh, let's just compare it for some other problems. Let's take a harder problem like, um, um, how about three tenths plus five six, for example. Uh, if I want to use the arrow algorithm, then I just simply say, okay, 6 times 10 is 60, uh, 6 times 3 is 18, 10 times 5 is 50, we're adding, so it looks like I have 68 sixtieths as the answer, and then I can reduce as necessary, and I'll come back and reduce that in just a minute. If I want to use the LCD algorithm for the three tenths plus six, uh, five, six, excuse me, then the first thing I have to do is say, all right, what's the lowest common multiple of 10 and six? And some people just look at that and know it, others have to do a fair amount of work. So I might do something off to the side, like let's see, 10 is two times five. And then uh, six is, oops, is two times three. So the LCM has to be two times five times three, which is the least number of prime factors I can get away with. What is that? 30. Once I find that, I have to say, okay, 10 goes into 30 how many times? So let's see, 10, oops, 10 goes into 30 three times. So I'm going to multiply by three, and then six goes into 35 times. So I have to multiply top and bottom by five. And even if kids, a lot of kids have to write all this down and more to get it right, um, others kind of just think it. But again, we all have different experiences there. So what does that give me? Nine thirtieths and 15 thirtieths, which all together gives me what? 15 and nine is on a good day, 24 thirtieths. Now a question here, 
Is there a smaller denominator I could have used besides 30? Is this really the smallest? Well, let's see, um, 10 is two times five, so the LCM has to have a factor of two and has to have a factor of five. Six is two times three, so I have to have a factor of two and I have to have a factor of three. If I try to get rid of the two, then I'll have what, 15? Neither 10 nor six go into 15. I uh, can't get rid of the five because 10 freaks out. Can't get rid of the three, so six freaks out. Yeah, I think this is the smallest. Yes, that's the smallest possible denominator I can use. But guess what? Is this the simplest possible answer, 24 out of 30? No. No, right? I can reduce that. So we notice, oh man, those are both even numbers. Darn, I can, I can divide by two here. I can divide by two there. Let's see, uh, 24 divided by two is 12. 30 divided by two is 15. Oh, it reduces still, I missed, right? Six goes into the original, so three goes into each of these. And so I get what, four fifths is the answer? Six goes into 24, four times six goes into 35 times, yeah. So even though I have the smallest denominator possible to deal with six and tenths, I still had to reduce. So I'm not saying that the LCD algorithm is bad or wrong or anything. I'm just saying it's complicated, it's hard, and you have to reduce sometimes anyway. Uh, the arrow algorithm, in my opinion, is wicked easy to use, and so you have to reduce a little more often than you do with the LCD. Um, you're still going to have to teach the LCD algorithm to kids, but there's an alternative that you will see more often in the worksheets and books that kids get to play with. All right, we are unfortunately out of time for fun and games with math today. Thank you so much for playing. Let me switch to my other camera. There we go. Um, we are about almost halfway through section five three. We have to do multiplication, then we have to do division, and then we have to talk about some other properties related to this stuff. Um, and yeah, so we may not finish section three next class. It may go into the next week. And I mentioned last week that that was probably going to happen, but we'll see. Um, you guys have an activity uh, to finish up and you have some homework to work on. I saw most of you have already done the reading assignment. Good job. Um, so that's it for now. Thank you for playing and message me if you have any homework questions. Otherwise, I'll see you all Wednesday. Bye, Evan, by Julian, by Bianca, uh, Brianna, and Monsi, and Evelyn, and Amanda, and Amy. Did you have a minute, Gary, or not? Sure, I, I can do. message you if you don't have a minute. Okay. No, I do. What's up? Uh, okay. So I went to look at my. I was just trying to do the reading assignment, and I noticed that I had a grade for activity 4.1. Apparently, the link that I sent you did not work, or the Oh, 14. yeah. Did you did you fix that? I'll grade it as soon as... I went back, and I cannot find it, but I have literally... What I did is I did it I did it via the paper first, and then it looked yeah. really messy. So I made a nice, clean Google Doc for you, and then apparently the nice, clean Google Doc didn't come through. But what I can... I can show you how to so, fix that. Okay. All right. So let's